there, Pisces, and oh no, that's not what I say. Hey there, lovely soul. I'm Infinity and welcome to the Pisces May 2021 Tarot and Oracle Read. It's great to have you here. I'm Infinity, shaman, mystic, medical medium, psychic, physical, empath, channeler, medium, and uh, channeled, guided, astral, meditation guide, and ascension coach, Distance Energy Healer, I work with people and animals worldwide. So check out my website for the services I have to offer you, your pets and your children. Uh, again, worldwide, I work um, via Zoom video conferencing and have for several years now. So uh, I have my guided astral meditations via my podcast, via uh, YouTube, and also my eBooks, and a lot of information on energy, energy healing, empaths, light workers, tons of information there, um, of course, as well as different services that we can work together on. So check it out. Oh, and I have my mediumship services on sale through the 15th of May in celebration of Mother's Day. So connect with your crossed over uh, loved ones via mediumship. It's one of my favorite things to do. So check that out as well. And of course, welcome Sun, Moon and uh, Rising Signs. Of course, Cross Watchers for Pisces. Uh, and let's get going with your reading, shall we? Uh, let's see here. Okay. What is happening? There we go. Okay. So let's see here what we get. We'll get into tarot and then we will get in, ooh. Seven of Swords flying out as your first card. And then, whoa, second card flying out is your Knight of Swords. A lot of like this knight, this swords action moving forward, flying out here. And as I've tried to say twice, then we'll get into the archetypes. Been doing these awesome inner quest archetype. Whoa. Inner quest archetype uh, reads. So let's see what we get here. Cards just falling out for you. Okay. Well, I'm take. We have been using just six cards but seven cards are coming out here plus our flip card our bottom card so let me share for what we got we have seven of no yeah seven of swords knight of swords uh seven of cups a lot of sevens here three sevens here okay the sun the ten of pentacles the chariot and three of cups is that seventh card and your flip card was the king of swords so or sorry king of wands i should say uh so <laughs> Pisces, we are moving, 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 a lot of energy moving. And here are your three sevens, seven of cups, seven of swords, and seven, the chariot. Let me show you your sevens here. So please look up seven, 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 as far as an angel number for you i'm being guided to tell you seven of swords seven of cups and seven the chariot uh we have this forward action going on with that knight of swords with the chariot 
this the seven of swords is just contemplating next moves but the knight of swords is actually moving and see that either crow or raven there at the top uh, guiding you in a direction um, there's just questions that need to be answered here there's decisions that need to be made where um, are you going but you know you're going somewhere this could be metaphorical spiritual physical um, all of the above but things are moving forward you are being pulled forward and it is divinely guided so if it's and this is also about big change we didn't get the tower card so it's not about like big um big like shake ups it's about big change and even though big change like moving or getting a new job or doing something different or whatever can shake things up this is more like a continuing a, a continuous situation of the of the shakeup so the shakeup to me kind of happened already the big shakeup or shakeups this is like you're still in that after the shakeup of your awareness spiritual awakening healing um you know stuff like this that things start to move and roll and here in the month of may is the first real like ball is moving with our energy like the first four months months is a lot of setup a lot of thinking a lot of redesigning of the inner where like the in the in the fifth month with our with our five five to five fifteen stargate um we're gonna be experiencing a lot of incoming energy like we have you have both now we didn't get the moon card but this seven of swords really showing that full moon and we also have the sun the sun is is telling you you're going to be getting so much incoming more incoming information it's just it's kind of like um your readiness for it <laughs> kind of like i heard like there's asking questions and getting guidance and see how those two resonate differently for you asking questions and receiving guidance and kind of figuring out how that works for you on a spiritual sense the difference between those two things i'm not going to spell it out for you i'm told to just leave that for you um ten of pentacles really speaking to your guidance pulling you towards like a, i'm hearing reunification with um spirit and people embodied and in, like incarnates um so both sides of this energy coming through is going to take you like i feel like you're still like searching for your people um whether it's a person or a group of people that the, like you are still in search of that so wherever you are now and if you haven't found that this is a very clear message coming through for you pisces wherever you are now if it's been more like well since i've been here i've connected a lot more spiritually but i haven't met anybody that i can connect with that's good and that's exactly where you're supposed to be it may be that in this physical space that you're in where you're currently residing is the place where you are supposed to deeply connect with spirit with the land with the elements but not so much with people um so just know that and don't feel like because you haven't connected with people like oh this was the wrong place to go because it wasn't where you're at is exactly where you're supposed to be for however long you've been where you are whether it's been a year two years three years and if you're like yeah i still haven't like really put roots here like i feel like if like i could just up and leave at any time and i'd be fine with that that's okay because you connected with the earth you connected with gaia you're a part of the grid work that needs to happen and activate upon Gaia. It's not always about meeting other people, but that is coming for you. 
Um, it is. <laughs> you have the Ten of Pentacles and the Three of Cups. Check it out. On, <laughs> excuse me, on both sides of the chariot. So remember, we have the three sevens, which is a, a divine number. It's being connected to and led by the divine when you have this, this seven here. This is about soul mission, soul connection, soul contracts, your um your energy from you know your karma, your akashic records, and all of this kind of stuff all weaving together a a, a road for you to go on, and you're going on it. And you are this Ten of Wands here at the bottom. I'm um, really coming through and saying this, this is feeling very much like Archangel energy being connected to those like Raphael and M Michael and Gabriel um, and Mother Gaia, <coughs> excuse me, Mother Gaia and Merlin and Metatron. These are the ones that I most closely work with, but this is who I'm feeling for you as well. Whether you're currently aware of it or not, they are in with you and are guiding you. Um, and the chariot also is proving that to me big time. The chariot is saying, you know, there's just a lot of like this forward movement. It's awesome energy. If anything, we just need to take out your anxiety and worry for the next step. So don't overthink it. If you keep thinking about a place, a destination, And even if it's not like any place that you thought you'd go or if it's like uh, like if it feels different or if you're going back to some place that you've been before and you're like, I didn't think I'd go back there again on a permanent basis. But if that's what you're being guided to do, you know, like don't overthink it. it you give it. It's like it's there's this in, there's this inner knowing it's it's like it doesn't matter if it makes sense if it's what you're meant to do you will know it and it will feel like this so let yourself like don't necessarily hide or run away from the contemplation and decide in decisions because you do need to make decisions but know that you know if you go from if you make your decisions from the heart and from the third eye instead of from the brain um it will feel really good okay let's get into the archetype so this is taking a card from each of this the groupings for the archetypes it's the kim crans wild unknown uh archetype deck so we're taking one card from the selves one card from the places one card from the tools and one card from the initiations or also known as the theme is what I like to say, what I'm guided to say here for it. So let's get into it, Pisces. Let's see what we have for our uh, self card. So this, this would be, it's called the inner quest. It's like the who, what, when, where, and like why or how and what's going on with us at this time. And again, this reading is for May 2021, getting the information here for you so you can have a better picture of the archetype energy that's happening for you. Okay, I'm not going to turn that over until we're, we get all the other cards. There's your self card. Here are your... Uh, places. Oh, wait. That's also a place. That just, that's like through me. I'm going to make sure we didn't. Okay. There's all your places. Oh, let's. I don't know why that's on. So the place. Ha, I just saw 1222. So choose also. So there's your place in here now. The tool. Whoa. 
Uh, I'm going to put them back. I don't know. I'm just going to put them back. We'll see what we get. If it's meant to be, it'll come back again. But that just felt kind of like weird. <laughs> interesting okay here we go there's your card yeah that felt odd <laughs> like almost like it meant to be distracting or something okay now the initiations okay so the self we have the shaman awesome the shaman for you, Pisces. Then we have the bridge. Oh, it's perfect for the shaman. <laughs> the bridge. And then we have for your tools, we have the seed. And then for your initiation, we have Alethea. Awesome. Okay, let me grab the book for us to get into it with the shaman. Starting off first here. Page number 93. Okay, the shaman. <sighs> the magi, the sorcerer, the medicine woman. Three arch archetypal ingredients constitute the shaman and all must be present in order to reveal its magic first. The shaman is activated by longstanding and diligent study or also known as the mentor. Second, its orientation is generously and accurately aimed towards the healing of the self, the other and the culture also known as the healer and third the shaman has a knack for finding doorways doorways to other worlds or the other world allowing psychic visions and old magic to leak into this world the unseen in this way the shaman is a master who bridges the everyday and the sacred revealing potent power needed desperately in our time yet where there is power there is shadow so the shaman must be diligent in studying their darkness this card reminds us that the force of healing is ultimately not our own we must shape it and share it with the world and when light fearless student and practitioner and when dark over promises blames hurt self and others so being a shaman myself <laughs> this is this speaks to to home and this is also pisces pisces is my moon sign so have a little stake in the game here so um really nice to see the shaman card for you pisces as well you're definitely somebody who is about study healing and the other worlds it, you're about knowing more seeing more be um coming from a place of uh being connected to more um, if anything, it's just about sorting out the guidance, getting clear guidance, knowing how and where to heal and how to go about doing that. But there's definitely uh, energy here that's pointing you towards going deeper. Deeper is definitely... And the all the sevens, I'm reminded here. So a shaman are incarnates... Uh, who uh, have been around, incarnated many times, have been healers in many respects uh, time and time again, and really can, you know, move into the different astral planes. Um, definitely something that I do when I, when I channel, when I do my channel guided astral meditations, I'd say I don't design them. I'm not the archetype of the, or the, the architect of them. I connect and I am told what to bring through. And so it's, that's the message that I'm getting here is that you're 
your kind of sweet spot is the receiving of information, the assimilating of it, the seeing how that applies to how you need to uncover and heal and all that good stuff. And it also, remember it said bridging. Uh, the shaman is a master who bridges the everyday and the sacred. And what did we get for our place? the bridge so very quite perfect here so let's get to the bridge now card number 159 wait what <laughs> what happened ay 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 Oh, sorry, 139. I've done this before. I mistake a three for a five. There it is. Sorry about that. The bridge. Okay, the connection, the line, the gate. Bridges are built to connect two worlds. They create flow, allowing us to travel between realms, ideologies, personalities. This archetype is the gesture of acceptance, of saying yes rather than withdrawing, separating, and saying no. When we cross the bridge to an unknown land, we are led magically into a new reality. We open up otherness. Healing and communication are made possible. We enter a state of curiosity, wonder, and learning. The shaman, for example, creates the bridge between the everyday world and the sacred. This card asks us to study the connections between the seemingly disconnected parts of our life, relationships, ideologies, history. Remember that the bridge can't be forced. It must be made with love or its structure will not withstand the inevitable weather of life. And when light, acceptance, magic, communication, and when dark, lacking boundaries forcing connection so there you go like i said <laughs> these two cards are very much connected already with the shaman and the bridge being a bridge allowing that bridge um to take place within you first and that's where you are dear one here with your journey you are learning these aspects of bridging and connecting these two worlds even more than you have this isn't new to you i'm hearing this isn't like you're like oh i've seen between the worlds i i can i can feel between the worlds i you know that sort of thing that's not new to you it's just the clarity is going to be in a new space for you especially the more you meditate the more you spend on focusing on healing on resetting or cutting cords on really working in that astral and meditation and bringing through in new um new energies into you and into the world really bridging those things together and it's also speaking to you moving into a new place, into a new geographical place. You're going to go from one place to another and your energy is going to is going to be like that. Really take it's going to be like you're going from here to there and it's going to be like this rainbow of light like you're going to be anchoring these places. So if you've been one that's moved around a lot, it's for a reason. You as this um energetic person as this shaman type person, whether you you know, really are like, take that very, very seriously. Like, and we're not saying, I'm not like diagnosing or saying you are a shaman. It's this energy of, of being a shaman. If you happen to be a shaman, awesome. But <laughs> this is also your energy of, of healing, of shamanism can just take place of you just being you and moving your energy around the world. Maybe not necessarily working with people in the public and really practicing shamanism as a profession, but just you you being in the world and moving around is healing for yourself and Gaia and the collective. So please know that. Um, okay, so then the tool is the seed. I, I literally, it's one of my favorite cards. I love the seed so much. Love the seed. So the seed is page 197. 
<laughs> and there's the seed. Okay, the beginning, the origin, the the pearl. Beginnings come in many forms. They are not always a beautiful seed placed intentionally in nourishing soil. Origin stories, like any birth story, are complex, surprising, multi-layered, and usually reveal a central image or detail that represents the fully formed being. Simply stated, the end is present in the beginning, or the entire oak tree resides within the acorn. Whether you follow this imagery imaginal theory or not know that when this card appears there is potent generative energy all around it stirs your very insides and usually results in an arts in an antsy impatient feeling pay particular attention to what agitates you as it is a sure sign of growth to come you are bumping up against a growth edge it is from the grit that the pearl eventually comes to be. And when light generation, sorry, germination, fertile, germinating, building, or sorry, ger generative, fertile, germinating, building. And when dark, festering, stewing, dormant. So <laughs> we definitely have this... Um, new beginning this like what needs to happen what needs to come into existence um and that antsy feeling that it talked about is just that feeling of needing to go like you have a lot of this forward movement stuff here you have this like divine connection with spirit guides and guardians and ancestors and archangels and fairy like i'm feeling everybody here just helping you find the place within you to bury the seed to see it grow and literally out in the world but it shows me too that you're just planting seeds in a lot of different ways and um that definitely this bridge is taking this inner bridge the outer bridge that you'll find where to go is really taking you to a new place to to plant a seed to let things start to really grow the seed is right up against the sun and the ten of pentacles uh, which is awesome, awesome that they're saying make this connection for them. Make this connection with the seed, the Ten of Pentacles, and the sun. The sun is going to hit that seed and make it grow. The Ten of Pentacles, so abundant in energy and connection. So um, that was just like a big, big, you know, like boost of energy here. Okay, now let's get to um, Alethea. For your initiation, my dear. That's not it. Pisces. Don't just there it is. Okay. Truth. Another one of my favorite cards. Truth. Our soul recognizes the truth. When someone speaks it, a cool wave of relief washes over the room and all the facts and figures in the world fall by the wayside. Such is the power of Alethea. It has an undeniable resonance that goes beyond the rational. We can also recognize Alethea by its contagiousness. When we hear someone speak the truth, we see the truth within ourselves and are more likely to tell our own story. The Alethea card requires us to step towards an act of truth. This might look like a conversation, a gesture, a poetic act, or a ritual that honors the unveiling of what's been concealed. Reclaiming your own truth is a way to reclaim your vital energy, health, and sense of belonging in the world. Truth has its own wings. Set it free. And when light, clarity, revelation, disclosure, when dark, disturb, 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 disturptions, disruption, sorry, I'm like, what is that? Gaslighting and excuses. Like the, the type is like so tiny. It is so, so tiny. Look at how tiny that is. It is so tiny. Um, so yeah. 
and technically I'm supposed to be wearing glasses, so yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, the truth, dear Pisces, is so important to you. It's important for you to be truthful, to, to feel the truth, to hear the truth. You have no patience for bullshit, anything that's not truthful. That is also the way of this shaman energy where because we're so energetically in tune to our reality and the other dimensions and what really is the unseen as it talked about here is um is energetic like i call myself a human lie detector because it's like when somebody says something to me um, or i hear something i'll know in immediately is that the truth or is it not it's like a ding a ping a gong a buzz one way or another that tells me that instantly even if a person is in denial for themselves um, if they're speaking from a point of view that is in denial, it comes through as untruth because truly that it is. Even if you're in denial of the truth, it doesn't make it any less true. And for those of us that are very much in tune with truth and the truth, we're very much about justice and truth and, um, and what is anything outside of that, we feel... Um, and even if we, I know I, I spent most of my life, um, uh, not wanting to feel, or how should I put it? I knew when I knew the truth, when I didn't want the truth to be the truth, but I knew it was a truth or I knew it was a lie. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't, I don't want that to be the, the truth, but it is the truth. And I know the truth, no matter what, if somebody's lying to me, a situation, a, really you know relation anything that it was you know it's just kind of like I may try to talk myself out of that to be like no 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 that's not right or they're not this or it's not that or it'll be this it'll be that to try to talk myself out of a truth even though I knew it but then I'd find myself going back going yep I knew it I felt it and once we stop really trying to talk ourselves out of that and just really accept our truth especially like it said with the shaman the shaman's like number one thing is about healing the self. The self needs to be healed before anything else can. If we're all projecting out like what's your truth but we're still like hiding from our truth. And this means concealment I'm hearing too. Hiding of the self. Not not showing your who you are in any given moment. This doesn't mean putting on a parade and talking about all your inner your innards to the entire world in public every single time you get a chance. But it means that in those in those nuanced moments where either we can hold back or just be fully authentic and not and just let it flow and slide and flow and go you know let the real feel the real the real feels is what i call it anything outside of the the real feels what is real and feeling the real will feel uncomfortable to us and not that we're not made to be uncomfortable because we are because growth and moving forward and evolution can be very uncomfortable we'll feel lost we'll feel tired we'll feel pain we'll feel lonely we'll feel dark all uncomfortable things but they're all a part of our growth this is how we evolve in the world is by being uncomfortable oh if we didn't get it here we got it in another reading it was the gem the gem the diamond becomes that any crystal becomes that by being you know in pressure in darkness in things pushing on it to become something else we're very much the same we're the a crystalline organic um a gem that needs to be pushed on and molded by the pressure around us the only that we decide if we want to resist or if we want to flow with that and truly I feel with you Pisces we're not in resistance we are in flow we do know these things we do want the truth we do want to to um honor the dark and the light of us and and we're not into judgment of any of it which is very healthy which is a really good thing um okay 
let's get into our Oracle Pisces. Which one are we using? I'm feeling the fairy. Fairies have been big time. <laughs> big time um so if you're somebody who if you are drawn to fae or if you've been f fairies and fae and that sort of business has been coming more around you or in your world um please take note of that because a shamans can't do diddly squat without the fairy realm to be honest with you there are such a deep connection with gaia and nature and um, they really take us to places that uh, would be hidden if we're not connected to them. So if you feel if you feel any of that, or if you've been wondering about that, I'm hearing no, it's true. Okay, let's go. Let's see what the fairy fairy realm has for us. This is the wild wisdom of the fairy oracle. We don't need a chunk of cards. We just need one. Oh, I feel this one right here. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Oh, wow. Card number 46, fairy lovers. New love, courtship, romance, falling in love. Whoa. How adorable is this? Okay, card number 46. There we go. New love, courtship, romance, falling in love. Oh, new love, enchanting and all important. It is like breath, food, or water. We fall in love and all the world is lovely to us. We radiate a dense kind of golden glow. Our brain activity changes. We find it hard to sleep to, and eat. And our chakras are wide open and spinning and spinning. Our cells sing to our beloved and oh, how we pine for them, even to be with them for a moment moment we think of them all the time for that is the next best thing to being with them all the time new love can be stronger than the will to live and finding love can give us the desire to live forever with our beloved it is not the same as mere lust or desire it is altogether more necessary for our existence that either splendid sorry it is not the same as mere lust or desire. It is altogether more necessary for our existence than either, splendid though they may be. When we fall in love, we experience euphoria, bliss, and rapture on such levels that to return to a normal state seems wrong, unnatural, and like a denial of our love. Our chemistry changes and our dopamine levels fire up leaving us feeling like we are about to receive the greatest gift possible. And we are. Love is sweet and powerful, and it is nectar to our own divinity. These fairy lovers have here have found each other. They are courting still, and they know not yet the sweet rapture of giving into desire, but it is coming, as is yours. There will soon be flirtation, intoxicating interplay, and a flurry of exquisite energetic activity between you and another. You are about to be intoxicated and drunk of fairy nectar and know what it is to be alive fiercely, brightly. Fear not that it will burn bright and brief. This flame, if you accept this cycles of magical time, could last forever smitten crush and ambrosia drinker oh my goodness i'm getting hot just reading about it pisces <laughs> oh need some of that water to cool us down here <laughs> you feeling the heat i'm feeling the heat divinatory meanings you are about to fall in love 
It is most likely to be with a beautiful other who you will be spellbound by. Do not fear. They will love you too. And the rapture that will come from this coming together will outweigh all the fear you have experienced or anticipate and exper experiencing at its loss in the past. Love is new. Sorry, this love is new, but it may also be the experience of the revival of a deep, fresh love in a mature relationship courtship being romance and swept off your feet sorry being romanced and swept off your feet you will find you and your love are both magical beings who respond best to being outdoors making love under the trees will help you stay in love and experience ec ecstatic union a wild free deep and true love is in bud Oh, rapture. Oh, deepest and wildest of joys. Oh, my goodness. Am I blushing? <laughs> Holy moly. Wow. I'm okay. 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 Hold on here. <laughs> so as I was reading this, Pisces, I was feeling it. This is like like for like shaman for shaman healer for healer bridge to bridge seed to seed truth to truth to th truth i don't know how i was able to read all that and hear and feel all that at the same time but i kept seeing this is like this whole thing is talking about also this seed coming this being pulled in a direction this sun card is like oh love coming in and i really didn't pick up on this before at all but now that it hit unequivocally this energy is very true and very hot and like the sun warm like I, the more i read this like i literally like my body is sweating and hot and i feel felt like all my sh chakras as it talked about your chakras are in flow and open and things are spinning and I was just like yeah I'm feeling it um and it is the truth and so Pisces holy moly we are being drawn to the sun the sun is also the soul the soul soul connection look at this we did talk about coming in union with others and um you know finding the people if you haven't found i did start this off by saying if we haven't found them yet we are going to it is coming we are getting pulled to that there's a 777 please again look into that we have the chariot we have this three of cups and it's like um this this energy is like <sighs> it's almost like you and your beloved on either side of that center and that center is like your your um your guides together pulling you together holy moly and it is a divine union i'm hearing this is a hundred percent divine union you may have already met this person but the energy here is more like you haven't it you're being pulled and they're being pulled to you like magnets together like um Oh, this is reminding me of the mantra that came into my head last night that I said over and over again in my head like 500 times last night as I was meditating and connecting. And it was um, like a magnet to my destiny. I follow my guides into the future. And that's kind of the energy that i'm getting here that we're being pulled into the future into our destiny and it is going to have all these facets of mentor healer and um and guide and uh for you it's like this back and forth it's very very strong and potent um 
And if you look at these, the horses, that light and that dark, it's like this will be a very good combination of divine feminine and masculine within each other, within yourselves and with each other. This like kind of business is like, I'm really feeling this like clicking, this magnet pulling together kind of thing. Um, and this energy coming through is really intense and potent and um this month of may is like they can this can happen and this can come at any time and i'm feeling within like the next couple months like any time between now this is may so may june july anywhere in here so be patient everything is going to be pulled together exactly how it should when it should please know that please don't sit and wonder like if i do this is this the right thing or how do you know what i mean just know just go as guided you have so much energy here pulling you towards the future with divine guidance with your inner knowing that you already have for yourself um you haven't gotten to where you are without already being connected it's just more and more clarity so whatever you're guided to do to clear your energy field to cut cords to do energy healing to to go on a retreat to um, detoxify whatever you're guided to do to do those self-healing guided meditations that I have and more will be coming soon I promise you stay on top of those subscribe to my website and my YouTube channel or check out the ones that are already available and if you see any even if they're full moons new moons stargates or whatever if you're being drawn to them do them because in each of these channeled guided astral meditations there's activations for the energy body the soul connecting to Gaia the more connected you are to Gaia the more immersed in nature you are you know out there and as you can see in or around me I have nature everywhere and 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 flowers and plants and stuff because this is connecting me to, to Gaia who I work so very closely with so do you I'm hearing so it's just more there's never too much connection with our guides and guardians especially with mother Gaia um, and your own guardian angel your own soul they're all here in support just don't get too wrapped up in in no in needing to know too much and being impatient about the process not you know if you're uncomfortable where you are ask the questions as to what you where you're meant to be because you are getting pushed to move whether again it's move physically your home where you reside if it's just moving from one house to another or m literally moving like away you are activating energy as you move and you're very much guided to you know go as guided you will find the perfect place it will all slide together once you make your decision to to like once you start the car, it's just like put it in drive and hit gas because it's ready to go and roll. Um, okay, Pisces, thank you so much for being here. This is an awesome read. I got to say, love this reading so much. Um, love coming to you uh, and just accept it, embrace it with open arms remove fear step into the wild passion of the unknown and let it unfold for you and um with that infinite love and blessings until next time bye for now